Bingo. It's uh, 11 o'clock and 30 minutes, and uh, I'm Jay Fidel on ThinkTech, and this is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And our special guest today is Randy Iwase. He's the chair of the State Public Utilities Commission. And again, we welcome him to the show. Thank you for coming down, Randy. Well, thank you, Jay. Thank you for having me. The PUC is very important. Well, energy is important in Hawaii. It's probably the most important thing we do, the most important initiative. It affects everyone. It will affect everyone. It will affect the, the economy of the state and the future of the state. And at the center of that is a quasi-judicial agency called the Public Utilities Commission. And Randy Iwase has been the chair of that agency. And some really interesting and important things have happened, are, are happening, and will happen going forward um, so as to shape our future in, in energy, clean energy, and, um, and everything around us. So it's very important that we talk to you from time to time, Randy. Um, and I hope we, we can see you uh, through the uh, year 2017. But for now, we're talking about reflections on energy in 2016. And I want to ask you, uh, you know, what has happened as far as the PUC is concerned in the last few years? Would you say it's different now than it was when you took over? Would you say there's a dynamic where it changes, you know, with changing times? How, how, how is the PUC organic? And how, how does it organically reflect the changing times? Well, I can tell you what I have been trying to do over the last two years uh, is to get people to understand that the, the process at the PUC is not uh, a political process. It's not like uh, getting a bill passed. You don't run around and you lobby people. It's an adjudicatory process. Just as you don't lobby judges, it would be inappropriate for people to try to lobby individual commissioners who have to act as judges. And um, that way we are, you know, we are look, ruled by the rule of evidence. Mm -hmm. We have to make decisions based on the rules of evidence. And that's what uh, we try to do and will continue to do. We did that in the next terror case. We will be doing that in the uh, cases that come before us. Uh, obviously, um, with the, the uh, uptick in interest in uh, energy sustainability and renewability, the PUC's role uh, is, has become, uh, in the investigative dockets we have, much more of a, a, a manager of issues. Uh, it's not a contested case hearing to try to bring the parties together, all parties, the stakeholders, the utilities, to try and develop uh, good, uh, sound vision and plans as we move forward in the area of renewables. So we're becoming a little more active, uh, and we have been since the inclinations, much more active in trying to develop that vision for Hawaii in the energy field. The inclinations, can you talk about that for a minute? What was that and will you do that again? Well, it, the inclination was really a response by the PUC to a filing <coughs> from the electric company uh, which was unsatisfactory about their vision for the future. And so the PUC uh, took it upon itself to write this white paper, creating a vision about what a 21st century utility should look like what it should be, how it should serve the public. And we've been driving towards that goal. Uh, it is not specific uh, because we need the input of all stakeholders and the utility. Um, we are dealing with it in the DER docket. Uh, that distributed energy resource. Energy resource. The power supply improvement plan docket, the demand response docket, and uh, the decoupling docket. And so um, um, now that they, the, the, the stakeholders out there know what, how we're viewing the world, how, do, how can we implement this? And those four dockets are going to be a, very critical as we move forward. Yeah, I want to talk about them. Um, so I guess the question is, uh, how has 2016 been for you? Uh, you started out in the middle of the next era, you know, uh, uh, docket. And you spent a lot of time, and we saw you on television spending a lot of time. <laughs> we have witnesses already. <laughs> that was really a remarkable, if not unprecedented, experience for the PUC. Uh, can you talk about how that was and uh, whether it got in the way of other things, perhaps, because of the, you know, the, the, amount, the number of issues, the amount of time? Well, when I started the PUC, at the PUC two years ago, we had about 32 uh, staffers. Uh, we built up to uh, 60, over 60 now with attorneys, filling the attorney staffing, the research policy, engineering, and compliance. Uh, we were not at 60-something uh, at the time of the next era hearing. So it, it, it did have an impact on us, but we still had the, rec the responsibility to move forward with, with cases other than next era. Next era was uh, a huge uh, case um, involving um, a number of documents, 
a highly controversial, um, well-publicized, and um, we, we did what we did based upon the rule of evidence, not upon what people thought should be done. Mm -hmm. There's a requirement in that case that the applicants uh, sh um, meet a burden of proof. Um, we determined that they did not, and uh, I'm comfortable with, with that decision. I think we made the right decision, mm -hmm. irrespective of what others may think, um, because I don't think the others read the 88,000 pages of documents, <laughs> sat through 22 days of hearings, yeah. and review um, uh, the opinions of experts. So, yes, it slowed us down some, but it did not slow us down totally. Mm -hmm. Do you expect that this m might happen? I, I know we, nobody has any information about it. I just wonder, in the, in the larger context, do you expect this kind of thing will happen again, that somebody will come into town from the mainland want to buy the utility? Well, it's always a possibility, Jay. Um, I mean, there's talk about uh, <clears throat> a co-op on the Big Island. Mm. And um, whoever, whenever that, uh, that occurs, the process will be the same. You have to prove that you are fit, willing, and able to perform, and you have to show that this application is in the public interest and will benefit the people of Hawaii. Uh, that guided us in Nextero. It will guide us in any other case. Um, that come, may, might come before us. So whether there are um, suitors out there, I can't say because that's not our role. Mm -hmm. But uh, when and if it does happen, uh, we'll be ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think the challenge, just putting myself in your shoes for a minute, the challenge would be you have to open it up. You have to be transparent. You have to hear all sides. You have to allow anyone, anyone legitimate anyway, who wants to testify to come in and testify. At the same time, as you said, you have to be governed by the evidence. Um, so it you know, becomes difficult, I suppose, when you have a lot of loud noise around you and you have to resist that. So is, I think in a way, Next Era was a good experience to, you know, to demonstrate that kind of process. Yes, um, and it was televised on Olelo and people saw what happened there. Um, about the noise, the, the, the background noise, you know, uh, because I've been around a lot, because I was in the political system, uh, and because I'm not uh, uh, here to uh, uh, move forward to other positions, um, this is my last uh, public service position, uh, it was easy for me to t uh, tune out the noise, mm. um, to recognize where it was coming from, to recognize what the motivation was, and to... Um, uh, recognize what our responsibility was. This is not my first time heading an administrative law judge agency. I d did that with the Labor Appeals Board. So it was, and, and we had an excellent staff reviewing the matter and uh, was duty bound to make sure that we, we adhered to the process, that we were not going to let uh, names, uh, in, you know, political statements uh, interfere with our duty to the people of this state, and that is to make sure that the applicant met its due, uh, responsibility, burden of uh, proof, and to, we look very, very carefully as whether or not, uh, in the totality of everything we had, this, this merger was in the public interest, mm -hmm. and we concluded that it was not. Mm -hmm. So after, I think it was middle of July when you ruled, and... Um, oh, no, we, I think we... Yes, it was. Uh, I think it was toward the beginning of July. Beginning of July. Yeah, first week in July. So after that, you know, all of a sudden, this is, this, the burden is off everyone. You know, now the, now the storm clouds disappear and we move forward. How would you characterize the rest of the year for the PUC, what's been happening? Have we recovered our, you know, our, our momentum, so to speak, uh, after Next Era was finished? Well, I don't think we ever lost that momentum. Okay. We may have slowed down a little bit, but we kept moving forward moving towards the vision that was set forth in inclinations as they are being reviewed in the four dockets. Uh, in the year, in the past year, uh, we uh, created the transition program from the NEM program to uh, 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 grid supply and self-supply mm -hmm. uh, so that um, th there's a greater uh, responsibility in the kind of programs that we have. And, and then we also issued a time of use a project uh, that hopefully uh, will get people to change their habits. That is very critical. Uh, we are working on now what's called community-based renewable. That was a legislative mandate where those who cannot afford uh, PVs or batteries 
one or the other or both, uh, can buy, uh, to lack of a better term, for lack of a better term, an interest in the power production at a solar farm or a wind farm and get a credit on their electric bills. And uh, that is still being worked on. There are some issues that have legal issues that have to be resolved, but we think that is also a critical component. Finally, um, um, uh, I think it's important and we're, we're, that uh, the new administrator for uh, Hawaii Energy, we've, we've met with him. Uh, we are trying, uh, and, and who is I, it? Uh, Brian Keloha. And I think they're all buying in that we have to be more aggressive in energy efficiency. People forget that we have two goals that were set by the legislature. One was the RPS goal, our re renewable portfolio, 100% uh, by 2045. There was also uh, uh, energy efficiency portfolio to meet certain, I think it was 4,800, I uh, forget what it was, I, I'm sorry, but by 2030 uh, to reduce our energy, uh, uh, to in improve our energy efficiency by re and thereby reducing consumption of electricity by 2030. So it's a two-front process, I mean, two-front uh, effort here, and we want to make sure that the energy efficiency side is very important, Yeah, uh, is, is pursued. And he certainly, um, you know, came out of the box running when he was uh, appointed what, six months ago or so. Yeah. Um, so what you have, I mean, all the things you've named uh, that are play in play for the, the last part of the year, say, you know, July through now, um, they all seem to be related, aren't they? You well, mentioned them as components in sort of in a larger vision. Um, and I, how do you handle that when you have multiple dockets, multiple initiatives? How do you bring them all together and make them work as one? Well, the first thing is to have good staff, and they are committed to, to that. Um, they help draft inclinations. They know the goal and the push that we have. My, my role as, the, as a PUC chair is to assist in that effort and to uh, lead that effort if uh, when necessary to keep pushing things forward that is why we have the four dockets um, in those dockets are not just the utility company but all the stakeholders including um, not just special interest groups uh, but also uh, groups that purportedly represent the public <coughs> they come in as intervenors they come in intervenors or participants yeah and um, you know, more is less in this case. Uh, in, the, in, in the next era case, maybe it was too much. We let in, we had over 30 interveners. But they, they are, uh, those who are the stakeholders in these dockets are very important to us. And I hope it is also important to the utility to hear. And I hope that they take, the utilities view them, uh, you know, they, they can, they can, Think of themselves, the utility, as uh, having all of the burden on them. And it's, it's a pressure-filled uh, um, thing of feeling to have. Yeah. Well, the pressure is on all of us because we are going to share the air, we're going to share the power, we're going to share whatever... Uh, whatever the result is. The result yeah. is. We are all in a, literally in one boat. We are in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, true fact. So, um, I, you know, explain to me, if you would, Randy, you know, a docket versus another docket. So do you, when in, a, in a docket, when do you come to the end of it, and do you ever merge them so that you can, you know, integrate the ideas and programs and decisions from one with the other in a sort of combined, uh, a combined result? Well, we haven't done that yet. I don't foresee that being done in, for the foreseeable future, but we have combined where there is a... A similar issue. For example, uh, Hawaiian Electric came in with a time of use for DOE, um, and, the, and they wanted us to open a docket. What we did was we merged it into the uh, uh, DER docket uh, because it's going to deal it with time of use in totality uh, in, as a whole. Um, we will. Uh, I don't think the four dockets will quote close in the in the foreseeable future because these are investigative dockets. It is an effort to develop ideas, thoughts, and finally programs uh, that will be initiated and implemented by the utility company. Along the way. Along the way. So the docket really doesn't close with this, you know, huge big order or anything. The docket, this kind of docket anyway, closes when you've investigated to your satisfaction all the issues that have arisen. Yeah, and, and then we may spin off mm. uh, issues and create other dockets. Mm -hmm. But it's, there is no hard and fast rule. Uh, Jay, we are, um, l l I mentioned earlier, we are a, a tiny little island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. 
And we are confronting uh, issues uh, because we are at the tip of the spear on energy renewability that other states really have not had to deal with. Uh, for example, and most critically, is the grid. We have one, literally one grid in the state. We can't shoot off power to Utah or California or accept uh, their power when we run out of power. We have to be independent. We, we are, yes. And in that regard, we have to fig uh, figure out innovative ways to deal with issues that confront or impact, uh, like the grid. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you give me uh, the background for the PSIP, what is it, Power Supply Improvement Plan that uh, Hawaiian Electric just filed a couple days ago? The one that's 2,000 pages long, that one. Yeah. <laughs> <There's> one. <laughs> well, it's... Um, um, it's asking the utility company, how are you going to get us to uh, 2045 mm -hmm. and 100% renewable? What kind of plans are you going to have? What kind of vision are you going to have? Now, what uh, we hinted at strongly, because the interveners hinted at it, rightfully so, and that was, let's not look, because we've gone, this is, this is like the third time we're doing it. And each time we send it back to HECO saying that's not good enough. Now, that does not mean it's bad. It's improved along the way. It's got perceptibly uh, much better in what they're sending back to us. The, the concept with the PSIP is the same as the, what do you call it, the, uh, the I, um, IRP before? Well, Integrated Resource Plan? That was part of it. Uh -huh. And it became, it was part of it. But we've got all of these four dockets now. But the PSIP is... What I think is going to be important for us as we move forward with this PIP uh, portion, and we may close it if we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens, is the interveners were saying we can't be looking, the reason why these, 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 the dockets has continued is because we're looking out 20, 30 years. That's a dream. There is no data that can go out 20, 30 years to give us a, a sense that these things can be done. So, you know, Hawaiian Electric, tell us, give us a five-year plan. Uh, how, where are you going to be in five years? What are you going to spend the money on? And, and so that we can make decisions, good decisions, on whether that expenditure is appropriate. As you, as you move, you can look out 20 years, you can look out 30 years, but tell us today what a five-year plan is like because you have the data to, for us to determine whether or not that kind of planning is good and will get us to some place better than where we are today. Yeah. So some of the things, I mean, when nobody has finished the 2,000-page, uh, it hasn't been enough time since, oh, no. what was it, filed Friday or something? Um, but some of the things that came out are kind of interesting, and I'm just uh, judging from what I see in PBN. Uh, one is that the utility is um, no longer actively pursuing uh, LNG, uh, or for that matter, uh, the undersea cable. Um, th is it possible that those um, initiatives will nevertheless um, be pursued? Well, we won't pursue it. They... The, that the request has to come from them. If that's what they said, that's what they said. And mm -hmm. we'll take them at their word, at least for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Um, I, and I, you know, let me add this, uh, uh, Jay. I, I hope that if there is uh, uh, acceptance by islands like Lanai and Molokai that uh, the cable is dead, that there will be more acceptance from those islands of renewables such as wind yeah. for their island. Yeah. Because I believe uh, that uh, before 2045, before 2030, Molokai, Danai can be 100% energy efficient. But it's going to have to rely on the uh, wind and solar and uh, other, other for sources of uh, renewables. But, you know, there is this, gr what I found from, from the next Terra hearing when we went to Molokai, Lanai, great distrust. We don't want wind because they're going to send uh, energy to other places. Okay, what happens, Molokai and Nanai, if the wind energy, the wind turbines are for your island? Will you be accepting of that? And so I hope that there is a rethinking on the part of the uh, residents of those islands, at least on those. Yeah. Right, it's different now. Before, um, you know, on the Lanai um, initiative, um, that was intended to serve other islands in the state, but uh, people haven't talked about the undersea cable in a while. Right. And so maybe we're talking about it island by island. Isn't that what's happening? You know, we are sort of moving from a notion of undersea cable connection or connection in one way or another among the islands in the state. We're moving to a kind of approach where each island is on its own. Well, I, I, well that's what we are now. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, and 
the question, um, there's no question in my mind that the Big Island, Kauai, Maui, Molokai, Lanai, they probably, they, they have the resources mm -hmm. because of the smaller population to be energy sustainable for themselves. Yeah. The big question is what are we going to do on Oahu? Yeah. Uh, we don't have geothermal. Um, we have limited land area given the urbanization of our island. Um, the, the, uh, one, one source might be hydro um, that can produce uh, the kind of megawatts that we need. And that has not yet risen to the top. Um, also on this island, um, in the area of transportation, can we uh, look at maybe the state fleet to go electric or go hydrogen or go uh, uh, fuel cell, I mean not fuel cells, but uh, a natural gas. Mm -hmm. So to reduce our dependence on, on fossil fuel. The big issue is going to be this island because we have, uh, what, 90% of the population here and uh, with, with smaller, with a limited land area that we can put on massive solar farms or wind farms. So that's going to be a challenge as we go forward. Yeah, yeah, okay. So uh, how long is it going to take for, uh, you know, the uh, uh, PUC to uh, act on? I mean, what's the process from here forward on acting on the PSIP? Well, it came in. Uh, we're going to review it. We're going to render our opinion. I wouldn't call it a, a, a docket closing decision necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and um, you know, it is, it is not, a, like I said, the PS earlier, what the PSIP does for us and to the stakeholders is to give us an idea of what the game plan is. If there are decisions or requests to us coming in, I want to build this. So allow us to expend capital uh, dollars for this project or that project. We will have a reference point to which, from which to make a, 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 a good deci better decision mm -hmm. on whether how this all fits together because we do have this PSIP yeah. docket. And it, in that docket, it's telling us what the picture might be looking like. Yeah. And so it's not willy-nilly, oh, I want to I wanna build um, a fossil fuel station, or I want to buy that. We'll, we can now ask why. How does it fit? Mm -hmm. Where's your five-year plan? Mm -hmm. How does it fit into that five-year plan? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it provides a more methodical way to review requests uh, from the utilities to expend money. Is, is, it, um, what do you want, is it dynamic? In other words, uh, if uh, you approve it, or you approve it with changes, or whoever you act on it, <coughs> and then say two or three years down the road, it appears you know other information has come to your attention, things have changed, technology has changed, and you say, you know, we approved that before, or we took this action on it before, maybe now we should you know, reconsider that. C can you do that? Would you do that? Sure. Um, I think I said it on the first program with you, that, uh, and I think we all know it, if, if you're in, especially if you're in the energy field, this is, this is all about evolution. Yeah. Things change so quickly that uh, um, it doesn't make sense to commit to a specific technology because that technology may become obsolete in a year or two. Yeah. Or a specific source of renewables because that may change. So we have to keep an open mind as someone once, as I use the analogy, an open platform where people can come and bring their things and then we can review it. It's a conversation. Yes, yes. I mean, kind of a formal conversation, but a conversation. It, it, and, and we have to, you know, at points reach decisions on it, but um, it doesn't do well to think that there is only one way or the highway. There are many roads that and more roads are going to be built. Yeah. Or that it's final. It isn't final it's because nothing, things change. Nothing, nothing is final. The only thing that's final is for the next 20 years, the sun should be still <laughs> shining. That's, that's a good bet. <laughs> <laughs> so, Randy, uh, looking, looking forward now to 2017, um, what, what, do you, uh, what do you see happening vis-a-vis -vis the legislature and logistics and staff and funding for the, for the PUC? Uh, have any expectations, any, uh, any hopes in that regard? Well, we have a budget that we put in. Uh, we're asking um, for, I believe, uh, over $900,000 more. Um, and, and the reason is we are going to have five, at least five uh, utility rate, uh, electric rate cases. Those are very draining on resources. We also um, uh, are laboring under the retirement of our chief auditor. And um, 
So we need that kind of expertise. We don't have any consultant experts in any of the rate cases yet. In addition to that, we're going to have uh, a five or six, maybe four or five or six water rate cases that we have to review. Mm -hmm. The electric utility cases, rate cases, are going to be contested case hearing. That's a drain. There's, and there's one now, right? Just recently uh, a rate, uh, rate request was made by Hawaii well, Electric. We have one that's going to go first. It's Helco. Yeah. Then there's going to be HECO. Yeah. Uh, then there's going to be MECO. And at some point in time, uh, if they have not already filed, uh, KIUC. Yeah. And they're, go they're going to be contested case hearing. We need the expertise. Um, now, I've, I, I did say we hired up to over 60. But I think what people must understand is this is a highly complex field. You don't hire someone uh, off the streets and say, okay, now you're going to be the rate expert. It takes that person, as someone told me today, who was at the PUC, it takes four years to develop the knowledge um, yeah. uh, on the, of the process and everything so that they can be experts in the field. Yeah. And so we have a lot of young people, young lawyers, uh, young utility analysts, and um, we need to keep, get them mentored. Um, and uh, using consultants will help that. It'll help the public. Yeah. So there are jobs there. Yes. Anybody's interested, they should. It's, they it's getting smaller. Getting smaller. Yes. <laughs> uh, you can call the PUC and and uh, ask for for me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, Randy, I, you know, it, it, I I just like to ask you, but I think I know the answer. Do you like your job? It's been interesting and fun so far, and it it's. Uh, let me say this, I am not sorry that I came out of retirement. <laughs> For this job. <laughs> now, if you ask me this last year, uh, next year, I'll uh, give you a different answer. Well, I think it's great that you come on our show, you talk about it, you talk candidly about it. I, I think it's part of leadership, and I think the PUC uh, you know, can and should exercise leadership in, you know, in, in the way it, it, it's, you know, which is legally possible. Um, I also appreciate that um, Mr. Tom Gorak is coming to the Energy Policy Forum Legislative Briefing, I think, in January, January oh, 12th. Good. So we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to take your temperature, and we appreciate you coming down. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. I hope we see you again soon. Anytime you ask. Thank you so much. Thank you. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Same to you. <laughs> Same to you. We all